Let's take a look at this problem taken from the AIMD 2018. It says a standard fair six sided die is rolled until a one, two, three in that order on three consecutive rows are obtained. Find the probability that an odd number of times is required. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. The first thing that I would do after uh, reading the problem statement is to try out the, uh, what happens for a small value. Say, um, what's the probability that uh, three rows are required to achieve that, um, that order, one, two, three order at the end, or four rows or five rows, etc. So um, let P n to be the probability that n times are required and then so p3 would be just simply 1 over 216 6 cubed in other words because uh, you can only achieve that by um, just rolling 1 2 3 in that exact order and now if it comes to 4 rows then so I have 4 uh, four blanks and the last three must be one two three now um, the first the result of the first row it can be anything because um, no matter as one two three four five six it will not affect the outcome you still need four rows anyway so your probability is still one over 216 and that's similar for p uh, for the case it, that we need five times because once we have fixed the last three rows, the result of the last three rows, one, two, three, then these two could be anything. No matter, uh, regardless of the combination, we will not get one, two, three earlier uh, than the fifth row. So it's still one over 260. However, when it comes to six rows, things goes a bit different. Even we have fixed the last three rows, one, two, three, there is still a possibility for, for us to achieve, some, achieve this earlier than the sixth row, which is that we have exactly one, two, three at the first three rows. So things start to get a bit out of control, but um, it's still manageable. Another point that I would like to make is that uh, whenever these kind of problems um, turns up, the concept of recursion would uh, definitely come into play. The reason is that this kind of a situation applies to infinitely many number of rows. Say, uh, we still have to take into account on say, um, a thousand and one rows or, or even a million and one rows but um, it's impossible for us to calculate all of them. So we have to look for some pattern that helps us to investigate what would happen when the number of rows gets larger and larger. And so here's an observation. Is that when the number of rows um, turns, to, um, turns to six from five, from five to six, you can see that Apart from adding an extra row, there is actually a kind of bijection between um, each of the possibilities um, under five rows and some of the possibilities under six rows. Is that it's just um, a direct copy of the P uh, cases in P five and then we add an extra number at the very left of that, uh, of that string. However, there is one special case that we have to take it out, is that if the first two rows in, in the, under the cases in P5 are two and three, so we write two and three here and we directly copy, and if the first row, we get one in the first row, under the cases in P6, then that will not work. So, in fact, I can claim that 
P5 is actually just um, there is only a slight difference between P5 and P6 which is that um, we can directly copy all cases in P5 to P6 but we have to take out uh, this one, two, three case, um, one of the cases, okay, in P6, and that's in a kind of in a ratio of 1 over 216. And so from that um, argument, we know that P5 should be slightly larger than P6, so we can subtract that. And we know that um, we have to take out 1 over 216 of the cases in P6, so that's 1 over 216 times p um well not exactly um p6 but p3 instead because uh we are multiplying um these cases okay um the cases under p3 by an extra 200 1 over 216 which is what happens um what exactly happens um in the uh previous three rows of those within a red circle. So it becomes over 216 times P3. And in fact, we can actually do something similar for say P7 minus P8, and that's again 216 times, and looking at the pattern, that should be P5. Because uh, what happens in the red circle could be um, arbitrarily long and the number of rows inside the red circle could be arbitrarily large so we can keep looping this, uh, iterating this uh, with um, bigger cases say P9 minus uh, P10 equals 1 over 216 times P7 and so on now notice that all of these terms, okay, the first terms under these uh, recurrence relations are, uh, are the cases that odd number of times are required. And the green cases, okay, the second terms, okay, in each, um, in each recurrence relation are the even uh, cases. So we can actually add them up and together with another... Uh, similar equation, which is the P3 minus P4, so to um, make the whole thing more uh, complete. However, P3 minus P4 is actually uh, zero from our uh, previous calculations. We have actually got that, so that's zero. Now we add them all up. So, after adding, we will get P, say, P odd, and then minus p even equals to 1 over 216 times p odd. Now, we can further simplify by uh, rewriting p even actually into p odd because the number of times required um, is either odd or even. So we now have come to an equation on our answer. So we can uh, simplify and solve it. And so that's 4, 3, 1 over 216 times P odd is 1. So the answer is actually 216 over 431. So that's the answer. And yay, we are done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you for your support. See you next time.